it happened to be that we we had this uh, interview scheduled in advance and uh, the world decided to go crazy the night before so i think we're gonna do it a little bit different than what i planned because i really wanted to, it to be 100 percent like about your journey about like interviewing about the situation in india it's mm -hmm. something i do want to get to um but uh, first i'd like to maybe try to address like some you know uh urgent questions about that people might have with everything that's happening yeah sure so first how are you feeling how are you did you like and uh, uh first of all can you please introduce yourself a little bit just tell us yeah uh, thank you so much uh, rebecca for inviting here and uh, i think it's our second uh, live session that we are doing it was the previous one was on my channel and um, uh, that was something on a different topic but uh, I'm Arif Hussein Terwat from India, uh, an ex-Muslim uh, from India, and uh, been doing all these activities uh, around uh, exposing Islam and uh, some other political issues where Islam plays a role. So, uh, and we always have some other activities surrounding uh, promotion of scientific uh, scientific timber that we call, and uh, these are the activities that I'm into, and um, uh, also. Along with all this, I always look forward for collaborating with uh, like-minded people around the world. And that's how I came in touch with Rebecca. And I'm so happy to be here again on your channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And you all, India is a super important country. It's on the rise. If you ever studied engineering and you have any question about engineering and you want to have like a good explanation on the things that the professors are trying to teach you and you don't understand you do notice that all those videos are gonna be by indians okay india is a huh? is a major power engineering power on the rise and that is affecting all of us just first of all humanity in general if we want to achieve anything we have to bring up that kind of aspects in society like we need everybody that can do that sort of job and like do this progress at the same team. So this is one like thing that's super important, I think is a people uh, with all due respect with uh, the Middle Eastern conflict and everything like that, uh, that would not matter if uh, an asteroid will come uh, to towards Earth, let's say it like that. We always have to remember, even in Israel, it's like we have this, um, this kind of um, understanding right there are there are conflicts regional like we fight like first of all among ourselves right the conflicts between how much can we work on saturday how much not like things like that and then we have of course like the situation with the arabs that's the second thing but then they have the bigger thing with iran right and then beyond iran there is also the the general forces of like communism and islam and the um, this civilization versus anti-civilization, the progress versus anti-progress kind of men mentality that we have here on earth. And then there are things that, you know, like humanity wants to be uh, able to uh, be in a position where they can collaborate to even take care of asteroid that's coming from extraterrestrial sources. It's, it's all about like there is something for it. Everything is important. It's not just like your fight with your neighbor. <laughs> that's what yeah, I, that's, yeah, yeah, in the, yeah, that's what something that is so crucial. Uh, that is a, in the bigger picture. Uh, we should be defending our uh, planet Earth. That's the bigger picture is. And uh, maybe um, in the future, <laughs> people will get some time to think about all these things, uh, about their religion, about their political uh, differences and other things. What we see here today is not that. So when you were telling about um, the, uh, the conflicts that is going on uh, in Israel right now, today we are having a festival going on here, which we call it, it as the Vishu. And for that, we uh, fire these crackers around our uh, neighborhoods and we'll be seeing all these uh, flashes of lights and the noise and other things. So I was just imagining uh, while seeing all these visuals that we receive over the internet, uh, over the TV news channels and all, uh, we are seeing this how um, 
this iron dome is functioning <laughs> where it will be fighting down these rockets coming uh, inside and it is getting neutralized and all so it's a kind of uh, visual that's only what we see from our part of the world that is from our country or from our place where we are sitting uh, in a safer place and seeing all these things but uh, for those people who are living in all these areas where they are constantly um, affected by these kind of problems uh, we always uh, uh, look forward for a peaceful uh, time where everyone will be living peacefully and uh, there's no conflicts like that so that's a bigger <coughs> dream and mm -hmm. i hope as you said one day we will all be uh, united in that sense um, irrespective of all our differences just for defending our earth from any asteroids or some other aliens or some other things maybe we mm -hmm. hope for that yeah <laughs> uh people are think uh, is your mic good just a second yeah. or, oh is wow perfect yeah yeah no. is it fine now yes and another thing i want to say when it comes to <coughs> india and understand them the middle east first of all there is this also conflict that is important to remember that we're talking about asian population mm -hmm. like the hindu like the Persians, like the Jews, like the Assyrians, like the the the, the Kurds, like the uh, a lot of the, there are a lot of things that uh, we also have mm. this long long history in the Middle East that is the history what that we have before the Arabs came here, mm. before the Arabs took over, and that history is not forgotten. And the influence that India had uh, on uh, the um, philosophical and ideas of the world and like the, the uh, spiritual progress is also super important. And in a way, we are fighting now that fight to bring those ideas back to the forefront, bring back those I mean, you're an ex-Muslim, you're, you're not from a Hindu perspective. I know I'm talking now more like from yeah. a Hindu stone perspective, but it's also something I just want to touch on in general right now. Those are things that, and then we have the fact that India is also collaborating with Iran in certain areas, economically, mm. especially, and Russia too. Mm. And we, yeah. Yeah, yeah. D yeah. Uh, despite I'm not a, um, a Hindu in my previous <laughs> position but I can understand what you are talking about that is uh, that's I can um, take it as a simple point that is uh, the the kind of inclusiveness that we are always looking forward so mm -hmm. India uh, in its essence uh, is meant for inclusiveness that's how India was standing in, in the whole of the history where it has included everyone who came into its soil, including Islam and all the Arabs and the Jews exactly. and even the the uh, missionaries from the uh, Western world and uh, even the inverters from the Portuguese, from the French, from the uh, British and all of those all those people. They were all coming into our land. So uh, the main the p main point is this. The inclusiveness that has led to a lot of goodness and that has led to a lot of problems so when we are addressing the some of the problems that we are facing today uh, one of the biggest problems is the partition that happened in 1947 along with the uh, freedom struggle and the uh, the independence movement that we were facing around that period where Gandhiji and Nehru and all those people were living so that's one area and that's the particular time when we were facing a very crucial conflict where the religion was playing a, a role and that who was Hindu and uh, the Islam, these were the two religions and the need for a second state outside India, which is exclusively for one religion, that was this Pakistan, that was the partition that happened in 1947. And the, the requirement for that was a separate nation for uh, Islam and the followers of Islam. That, that means Muslims. So you, you just look at them. That is, they were living in a place where inclusiveness was a 
part of their existence and they wanted to go out of that and they wanted something exclusive and just le- look at the that country now uh just after this pakistan. initial yeah. yeah pakistan just after the initial partition they again got uh, parted into two that that is bangladesh and again uh, the the now what is we call it as the pakistan so these were the two other countries and now if you look in those two countries you can still see the problems within where they are still fighting between their own sects like uh between the shias the sunnis and the other problems within the governance like uh, the coups that happens over and over like the the attempts to topple the governments the elected governments by the military and other things so things are not easy so if we draw a line between india and the way other countries along with india which were formed along with india that is pakistan how did we improve it is just because of one thing that is we kept forward this principle of inclusiveness and that doesn't mean that we are not facing any threats towards that we are facing some threats and we are united enough to defend those problems and to uh, ward off all these kind of problems affecting our existence affecting our inclusiveness affecting our secular uh, secular existence the democratic existence all other things and that's how we are surviving and it's not an easy game as you know uh, especially yeah. for a person you are coming from you are from uh, israel you can just imagine how you are existing in a whole world where every other country around you are arab and they are non democratic they are non secular and you are the only country where at least you have secularism you have democracy you have palestinian muslims living in your country as israeli citizens so this is the kind of uh situation that we both share as an equal or something that is similar because <clears throat> when the partition happened uh, there are some muslims who chose to uh, stay back in india they were against these kind of movements and they are still with india and they are still fighting against all the forces that is acting against india as an idea so that's very important okay and how okay so i have i have tons of questions i just mm-hmm. wanted to address that initial sure. curiosity with everything that happened at mom uh, yes at uh, mom yesterday so i'm going to ask you one question and then that is about that and then i want to go back to sure yeah um how was the news for you last night like how did india how was the reaction how was it like how was it seen that bad like that uh, attack that was launched towards israel by iran okay um to be honest we <laughs> we are taking this attack attempts from iran as something that is so uh, so naive as a country okay so which uh, disregards all international uh, diplomatic relations and other uh, serious relationship we always talk about relationship goals and other things so we are seeing from a country where it is not regarding any of those principles which should be kept between two countries that's what we are seeing uh, promoting lies and other things and that's one part and the second part is that we always believe that uh, iran is not capable of attacking uh, Israel not even Israel it was not even able to attack Pakistan a week or a month ago where um Pakistan made an attack into the soil of uh, Iran where they were targeting some uh, terror outfits from that Balochistan region and other things so they were not able to even retaliate that so that means I forgot what? I remember it's Iran that started wasn't it Iran, Iran that, that went started, to Pakistan yeah. and then Pakistan yes. answered answered and that too inside the border so that's what happened and iran was not able to uh, carry forward with that attack they just uh, took back from that and they were saying that okay it's over over is over done is done past is past so they the same thing will happen with this even this attack that's what i believe because the military prowess of iran is nowhere to compare with uh, any of these countries especially when it when it is compared to israel it's not able to be uh, withstood like that and even um 
from a country like India, if I say that, I- Iran is having a, a, a very good relationship with India. So uh, most of its business is happening between India also. So uh, there are diplomatic ties and other uh, discussions and other instructions passing on. So I think Iran won't be able to uh, go forward with this kind of uh, atrocities that is um, like a mad dog doing whatever things that they are uh, they are just imagining, dreaming about. So that's not the way. So that's what I believe or we, we are believing. Yeah. So is it like, is it viewed as a like weird attempt by Iran to show what Iran is trying? Just to, yeah, it's a, it's a uh, erratic attempt. That's what I would, I would say. So, so was India like, were, were people surprised that Israel was managed to answer the way it did? Like uh, to defend itself the way it did? Uh, sorry? Uh, what? It was Indian India Indians were they surprised that uh, Israel managed to defend it of the way they never did? we always know that Israel will def- defend it <laughs> okay. and, interesting. and how would you feel this um, do you feel like that conflict can potentially in um, in affect India um, if there is a full-fledged conflict that um, uh, that will uh, extend towards all other countries in the, the in that Middle Eastern region. That will not just affect India; it will affect all the world, the supply chain and other things, and uh, the whole world will be affected if that goes into a full-fledged war. So that's one other thing. But apart from that, what I see is that um, Iran is having good relationship with countries like India just for their survival, like their business deals and other things. So if things go wrong, it will be Iran who will be affected uh, at the end of end of the game. So it is their take whether to go on with these kind of erratic attempts. So that's what I would say. Interesting. And what, okay. So I want to ask about you specifically, and then I want to go back to a more wide view of the Muslim versus non-Muslim world. Let's mm. just, I, I believe it's not just Islam, it's also communism that is in the same. And by the yeah. way, this is why I also mentioned that you're not an ex, also ex. only an ex-Muslim, you're also an ex-communist. Yeah, ex-communist. So <laughs> I kind of wonder, like, first of all, how, di- how was your Islamic upbringing, but also how did you become a communist? Yeah, uh, communism and Islam. Uh, you you can take any Islamic country or any uh, communist country. You can see a, a uh, what do you say an instinctive relationship between these two things. So it will be like uh, Islam uses communism for its growth, and at the end, when Islam gains the upper hand, it will first assassinate uh, communism from its list. And mm, that's what happened in Iran. Yeah, and then it goes on. That's what happens. And we are seeing the same thing in even in my place where I live. This is exactly is what is happening here. Wait so, one second. I just want to give a background. In okay. Iran, what happened was that when they wanted to bring down the Shah, they had mm. a, a collaboration between communists. And by the way, Infidel Nodal, I really like your channel. Hi, <laughs> back. <laughs> just want to let you know what to show. Yeah. Um, the, they 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 collaborated to bring down the Shah, and then the first mm-hmm. thing that happened once that happened is that the um, Islamic uh, the Islamism brought yeah, down Islamic revolution. It brutally brought down the communists. <laughs> yeah. um, so interesting that uh, people don't learn. I don't know mm. why. It's yeah. But it's it's very difficult to understand this complex relationship. That's the problem. So how were you exposed to it together? A growing, like you grew up Muslim, right? Yeah. Uh, how I got exposed to this communism is because um, in our place we have a uh, our uh, prominent parties. One is uh, something we call as the Congress Party, which is uh, non-communist, but a central left kind of thing. And this communist party is the other thing. And uh, we had a friend. Uh, where many such leftist ideologies, uh, and the major one is the Communist Party, they were having an alliance. And uh, these are the two parties which always fight in our place. And we have the third one, that is the BJP and other 
parties which uh, was not having much role in our place but uh, most of the times uh, the major fights were between these two parties so um, uh, one thing which we were always exposed to was that a, a change of power between these two parties so for, for the one five years one party will be ruling and the election comes then the next party will get it elected and then that party mm-hmm. will go on so this goes on like that so, so was it I, in your mind like it's either islam or communism was it like natural for you to go from, uh, or uh, was it together yeah so uh, we as students when we were um, uh, studying and we were exposed to uh, these kind of political movements there are some uh, political movements for the students and one such a major organization we call it the students federation of india sfi we call it and uh, that's um, uh, having a, a pretty good majority uh, in all these colleges and i was one among them so i was uh, part of that organization i came into touch with this uh, leftist students wing students organization and i was a leader working in that i became a college uh, union position and other things and all so it's a kind of um, Uh, political activity within the college so we'll be running college union we'll be ruling over there and all those stuff so that's how we get exposed to these ideas and later on after we come out of this college we will carry all these baggage with us like whatever things that we were getting inside the college we will just carry it forward and most of that uh, will be something related to this communism where we will look for the adults variations like the communist party outside college so we will th- then just pass on to the communist party where we will uh, blindly support whatever things that they are doing so that's how we just transform or transition from uh, the college life being a student into the uh, adult life where we just come out of the colleges and we will be just part of this communist movements and that's how it goes on and in uh, in that journey we will keep on learning about uh, communism and uh, there are certain points which we are always uh, fed like this is what is communism that's how they teach us or they constantly inject into us that is communism means uh, supporting the uh, the downtrodden supporting the uh, uh, the the most uh, deserving people and uh, something related to opposing the over um, uh, capitalist uh, uh, this uh, monsters that is ruining your economy so uh, mm. upholding socialism so these are the things so uh, when you take this word that is humanity and uh, humanism it was uh, constantly attributed towards communism and if you are only a communist you will be a humanist so mm. that's how we were always Uh, told or we are always uh, fed into like even through the newspapers and the media and all other places we ha- even have these movies and other things where they always constantly do this exercise like uh, humanism humanist values communism so that's how they do it so we uh, we are just made into or we are made uh, a a prey into this propaganda of communist propaganda <laughs> we call it now so that's how it goes on so uh and now this point that is humanism and these core values of supporting each other and other things that will stick on to us and when you become an islamist when when you are serious about islam and other things it is exactly this same point which comes here that is humanism supporting each other the brotherhood uh and all other things so what you see is that the most uh, uh the viable option being a muslim is something similar so when you look around who are talking who are the people who uh, which is the political party that is talking about humanism and supporting each other and this brotherhood so when you look by the uh, way yes i want to touch yeah, that but yeah. one sec i want to there's it just sure. made me laugh a lot i have told her coming leo friendman is my uncle <laughs> okay hi uncle <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> so your whole family uh, is watching this. Yeah, my family is watching this. Oh, great. <laughs> anyway, uh <laughs> <laughs> Well, with love, but it's made me laugh so hard just seeing that comment. <laughs> okay. Um any yeah. um 
but one it's interesting yes because it is a thing so mm. the way they re represent islam is that they say islam makes everybody equal because equal, once you're yeah. a muslim you're part of the ummah then yeah. there are no differences there are no difference between like co color or race or mm. like uh because when you become a muslim it's where you're part of the brotherhood everybody's mm. equal so this yeah. is i heard that uh, uh kind of uh, argument a lot saying yeah. uh what is this with they, all those things like those are yeah. dividing us and like judaism is like genetic <laughs> genetically gen Superior. like it's <laughs> like no no it's like a supremacy based on genetics because like yeah. or that uh and then they say like no but islam is like perfect because it makes everybody completely like they're part of the we're brothers we're all the same and everything like that hmm. so yeah so they are uh, literally they are marketing these te terms like humanism equality and all these things and they you, they have certain icons like muhammad ali cassius clay he came to islam just look at him he was suffer suffering from racism islam is anti-racist this, these are the kind of arguments that they make. When mm -hmm. you look into these uh, issues closely, you can see that Cassius Clay came to Islam just uh, not by believing that Islam is anti-racist. It's by uh, just a, a, a kind of um, a protest that he was making, a, kind, a statement that he was making. If being a Christian, if you are not able to see me as an equal, okay, I'll just choose something else. So it's a kind of uh, protest that we make. We all do this uh, with whatever uh, uh, political um, identity we have. We, if we are facing some problem and if we are into one political idea, we will just shift or we will switch from one political idea to another one to just show our uh, protest that's just happened. And you can see these people are converting even in our country where uh, people from Hinduism who were affected by this casteism in the past they shifted from Hinduism to Buddhism because in Buddhism there was no caste, there was no these kind of uh, upper caste, lower caste, the Brahminical uh, hegemony and other things. So they just went on to Buddhism. So th this is what happened. So what happened next was okay, these Hindu people they uh, they 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 uh, found a problem in that and they were deciding to rectify that. And uh, some people like Shankara and other people like the Adi Shankara and all they came forward and they. They were trying hard to uh, get over this caste-based uh, segregation and other things. And that's one history that we are always taught to. Yeah. Interesting. So the, here's just in like popping to my mind, like I have three examples of like they use uh, the vulnerability or a place where things are not perfect in each society they try to penetrate in the universities. So for the United States, that would be race because the united states has a whole history of like uh um it's like as if it's race based but like you know a lot of like distinctions like those are italians those are irish those are uh um english those are the those are africans those and things like that so they would the communists and the uh islamists would say Oh, in communism and and, and uh, Islam, there is no race, so everybody is equal, and this is what they will present, for example, in the United States. And then in the, it sounds like in India, what's they were um, the the vulnerability point they were targeting was the caste system, saying, mm -hmm. hey, there is no such thing in caste Islam and common yeah. exactly. So they were like, listen, you have that the caste system, like you know, and then yeah, like you have the race thing, you have the caste system thing. Or you have a in Europe, it would be like a col colonialist past. Wherever, yeah. whatever, like um, a vulnerability, this point where people feel like this is something they have to pr improve about their society. This is where they would hit and would yeah. sell that uh, perfect uh, pill of uh, here to swallow that, and everything would be amazing, right? Yeah, this yeah, that's happening. that's yeah, that's how they always market Islam and. Uh, and even at one point of time, even communism was using the same tactics, like uh, spreading against all these things. So uh, they were overtly uh, like anti-caste, anti-religion and other things. But now what they are doing in our place is they are uh, behind this religion, especially Islam. And they are taking in all these, uh, these radical elements in Islam. 
uh, into their own party and now they are filled up with uh, we always say that the communist party is red and the islam is green so now the communist party is green that's what we say on a funny note <laughs> yeah so now the communist party here is green now so what did it mean for you to grow up muslim in india what it was it like uh, grow up as a muslim here is um, uh, we i was living in a time where um, the people in india were especially uh, the place where i live is one of the uh, largest uh, states where people mostly go into this uh, uh, arab countries for uh, work related things and other things so if you take india as a whole it it was through kerala that's the place where i live the state called kerala it was kerala <coughs> which has uh, the most number of expatriates from middle east at one mm -hmm. point of time so kerala was having a kind of relationship with uh, uh this uh, middle east even from most uh in the in the past history itself so we have this uh the first uh, masjid or the mosque in our in, in our country that was in kerala so we have the jew settlements in kerala we had a very good population here and it was through kerala it was the port the major ports in india were uh, throughout this coastline so we had such an exposure so that one that was one a point in in the history but the same kind of exposure that kept happening in our place so it was not just the business it was not just the exposure that we were getting uh, from the middle east that was getting imported into our uh, land it was also this radical islam that is the wahhabism or the salafism that was also getting mm. imported here so what so, values did you that they teach you yeah then? so the 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 only the most dangerous value that we were thinking that was so valuable was uh, to uphold islam each and every moment each and in each and every aspect of our life like you have a in indian festival like we have our onam or we have our indian hindu festivals that is haram you shouldn't do that okay so you have uh, your own festivals that is the eid eid al adha and eid al fitr it's just that is for muslims so don't go for onam don't go for uh, diwali don't go for other things so that is the uh, the way that we were even getting exposed well i was growing up as a muslim mm -hmm. so <clears throat> it was like we were taught to get rid of this inclusiveness <clears throat> the kind of um, the friendly nature that we were having with other religion so that's the place where we we were uh, facing a, a conflict within ourselves a, a a kind of cognitive dissonance that's what happening within us within myself that is on one part you are studying in the school you are studying in uh, in your every wake of your life you are engaging with your non muslim friends and everywhere you are meeting them you are being with them you are friends with them but when you come to islam you are being taught that islam uh, doesn't allow you to be friends with non muslims so mm -hmm. it is haram to engage in non muslim uh, festivals and other things so it was always a conflict that was going on that's interesting so, yeah so i think it's a very important what you're telling because this is exactly mm -hmm. what's happening in the west now so you have a minority mm -hmm. of muslims that are being taught to uh, not basically not tolerate other religions Yes. Even though Hinduism is the original tradition and custom of the land. But the problem is there. One, yeah, one, one important aspect is there. So when Islam, this radical Islam, they were doing all this, they were uh, proselytizing all this information, uh, just saying it as something that is so normal. The Hindu population here, they were even inclusive to that also. That's what I, I say. <laughs> they were like okay that's their religion that's how they lo look at their religion look at their religion how disciplined they are we hindus should look at them and we should learn from them how to uphold religion so th this was the kind of approach that was taken by the hindus and other people because they were always trying to look at the goodness of anything that comes to their land <laughs> so they were even looking at the, the way islam is uh, carrying out the discipline and other things but they they were so late to realize that this is already eating them up okay that's the biggest problem what what is the cost of that what how do you, the cost 
is the radical Islam has, has uh, risen to a, a point where Kerala is the uh, is the is the state which is supplying the most number of ISIS recruits in India now. That's the cost. Well, that's that's a very <laughs> okay. So people used point. to ask me for people used to ask me like, okay, you are doing this ex-Muslim activism and. Uh, how how this activism ex-muslim activism can be taken into other states of india i always say them that okay you first teach them extreme islam radicals radical islam should reach you first then only you will understand the the need of an ex-muslim because only after you learn islam you can become an ex-muslim and you can become a radical muslim so <laughs> there's no other short shortcut for that you can't grow a Muslim as an ex-Muslim. <laughs> That's not the point. Okay. You can't, you can't proselytize ex-Muslim, uh, these kind of things. You just keep on saying, you just be there as a, uh, as a person who writes negative reviews about Islam. That's the only thing what we call as ex-Muslim activism. We just uh, do the negative reviews about Islam. Negative means it is not imaginary. These are the real things, what is inside Islam, which no Muslim will ever say no islamist would ever say because if if they say that no one will join islam for example for example you were we were mentioning about the casteism so uh, people uh, always say that okay casteism is a past it it is being sorted out and other things yeah i agree that that is the speciality of hindu religion that's what i say because if you point out a problem if you point out an issue within that religion they are ready to change they have that mechanism within that people. They are ready to uh, uh, discard the, the, the bad areas or which they find as not uh, valuable or which they find as not um, aligning with the modern values for a country like India to exist today. They are ready to keep it aside. They are ready to take up the modern values. They are ready to take up all such things. But that's not the way with Islam. So if there is a conflict between a modern value and a religion between Islam and uh, uh, Islam and this uh, in Indian or this modern values the Muslims what they do is though they will go with Islam but if you see a similar conflict between a modern value and a Hindu religion or some aspect of a Hindu religion the Hindus they will go with this modern values that's what I'm saying mm -hmm. okay so they always they always give priority for these modern things about religion. That's what I say. So the first thing you learn, right? So you are a moderate Muslim, is that you don't, you I learn some sort of Muslim. intolerant, moderate, intolerance towards okay. other religions, plus you, those who are of other religion are not really your friends. Mm. And then um, this pride in your, is, is pride in Islam and this, a nurturing of the of defending it right no matter what mm. but mm. not necessarily straight away are you exposed to all those things in islam that are really scary right mm. Mm. am i yeah. getting it right yes yes that was so scary so i even sensed the danger that uh, would occur if if like india becomes an islamic country what would happen to india so this was the extent to which I was thinking. Being what a, made you think that? Like, what made you? I feel like I feel like for a lot of people having mm -hmm. that thought that okay, we have our um, like our ummah, we have our brotherhood, and then everybody's equal, and then they don't go beyond that per se, and then this is yeah. where where they stop seeing, mm -hmm. and they don't really uh, necessarily even straight away apply everything else that Islam offers right yeah so uh, so what makes you see what islam really is then um we have uh, i would say due to mainly two reasons one is the knowledge of islam like i am i was keep on learning about what islam is so in my first instance i was always uh, looking forward for seeing uh, the same slogan that you can see now that sharia for uk you might have seen that the same way Sharia for India, just imagine, <laughs> okay. This was the slogan that I was having. There are many other people who were having the same slogan. Uh, so Sharia for India or Islamic rule for India, this was a, a goal at one point of time. But later on, 
we were having being a democratic country that was well dealt with in this country where we were having opposing views and other things and we had all these uh, 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 this uh, criticism against that so that's one area and the other one is we have uh, the news and other things that is coming from outside india where we are seeing other problems like the major one was the the rise of uh, uh, the taliban in uh, afghanistan mm -hmm. that was one moment where i was getting an idea okay there was a problem and i remember still the uh, the, the taliban was uh, uh, they were bombing this uh, bamian uh, statues in uh, afghanistan the, the buddhist statues so at that point of time i was studying my 10th class uh, my high school so i was literally shocked to see that though i was not a well uh, made indian citizen something grown up i was just a kid school kid but at, even at that point of time i was thinking what <laughs> what the hell they are doing because we have a lot of statues in india we go to places we have caves we have monuments and other things we have these museums where we go and see all these things also i knew what all these things are because it it is some a memorial for the past their history and other things so it, it was having a point a a a, a a requirement in our life to know about the past what the taliban was doing in uh, afghanistan was destroying all these things and the reason they were giving was it is un-islamic so there are multiple instances like this which kept on adding uh, points by points like Islam what was with the response from Muslims that you knew? So the Muslim, you've grown up in mm. a tolerant society where there are multi multiculturalism, where you have a lot of different views and everything is uh, uh, mm. uh, celebrated, tolerated. Everything is living together, mm. right? And then on the other hand, is like from that's your environment, and then your Muslim, what Islam teaches you is that, first mm. of all, that the Ummah is the number one thing. One, yeah. So what, when you saw things happening in, Tali like, that, what was the Taliban doing? How did the Muslims around you, like, how, what was their reaction? Mm. For that particular event, I was not aware of what the Muslims were telling because uh, those kind of discussions I was not exposed to because I was a school kid and other things. But I was I used to read the newspapers and I, I was exposed to only the news, but not the uh, comments made or the discussions over that. And even we I was not we, I was not having that luxury of having a news channel in our home to listen to the debates and other things because, you know, as a school kid, it, that they are the luxuries. But later on, after joining the college and after uh, a few more years later, then I started seeing some other issues which happened even in our place, inside our state. We could see uh, there's a free run for Islam, a unchecked run for Islam. Okay, like uh, it's like Islam, if it creates a problem, since it's a minority, that is okay in India. This is the kind of thing that happens. A kind of victim card. That's what is happening. Okay. So, Islam Wait, so being... So, Muslims were saying that the Indian the society minority. doesn't doesn't tolerate them? Uh, no. Indian Muslims, uh, when they get caught in some uh, instances like this or when they commit some problems like this, oh. nobody will dare to question them. If someone comes and questions them, then comes the Islamophobia that that name calling and the second thing is in india islam is a minority so we shouldn't criticize islam this is the main thing and we you can see the same aspect going on in every other place where islam is a minority they they stop criticism against them by using the same tactic we are the minority we are the oppressed we are facing this we are facing that and other things and the, these are the same people who will commit all the atrocities starting from Afghanistan, mm -hmm. from Yemen to Syria to Iraq and what happened in October 7th, they never acknowledged that. That's what we uh, all, always say about this. Yeah. Okay, so what made you actually go active against us? And why, what made you ex-communist? Yeah. Okay, maybe I should, what was first? What was first? 
द फर्स्ट थिंग वॉज एक्स होम्योपैथ दैट्स नॉट एक्स कम्युनिज्म और एक्स इस्लाम दैट वॉज एक्स होम्योपैथी बिकॉज यू नो इट्स ऑल अबाउट यूजिंग रीसन एंड इट्स ऑल अबाउट यूजिंग दिस साइंटिफिक टेम्पर एंड यूज ऑफ एविडेंस फॉर अराइविंग एट सम डिसीजन्स सो दैट्स समथिंग पेक्यूलियर we uh, we were never trained to uh, do uh, especially being a kid like there are some uh, fallacies logical fallacies that we are always told to that you do this because your elder is doing elder one is doing this you do this because your teacher told to do this you can do you must do this because because everybody in this country was doing the same thing for the past 100 years so you must do this so these are the some of the instances or the examples by which we are forced to do multiple things okay so that is a a a shell which we have to break like that's not the way where we have to go with a decision if you have to take a decision you must look behind that like you must find a reason why i should do this why i should uh, take this medicine so when it came to my profession being a homeopath i was a homeopath uh, uh, i studied homeopathy for almost 5 and 1/2 years almost 6 years and i was practicing for almost 5 years so for all these years i was listening to one argument that homeopathy is uh, pseudo science so it was like a big blow on to me like i spent all these years for studying something is not science which is pseudo science is this for something that i studied all this so i just wanted to uh, prove myself that whether it is a science or pseudo science so i just behind went behind all the arguments all the criticism i checked each and every one of them i took all the arguments uh, and i i was looking behind all these um, arguments like looking for for evidence looking for uh, the reason why they are saying this and all and finally i came to a conclusion by almost spending uh 6 years and spending maybe a few lakhs uh, rupees indian rupee uh, and uh, wasting a lot of time i came to a conclusion that what what these cri- critics of homeopaths homeopathy what they are saying is right homeopathy is a pseudo science now the point is to leave homeopathy and to find some other job so i decided to stop practicing and i uh, came into uh, this uh, criticizing homeopathy for the goodness of other children who are waiting for admission for this homeopathy course just the way i was getting into a homeopathy course uh, being a kid after high school nobody was there to inform me that homeopathy is your science that's the only reason why i went into that so i just m- wanted to make it sure that uh, no kid should join a homeopathy course Nobody, no kid should be joining a homeopathic yeah. course. Yeah, <laughs> homeopathic course. That's an amazing start because I think yeah, this without way knowing, that you're without describing. Without knowing homeopathy is a pseudo science. That is That's exactly the, the problem. Yeah. That's yeah. the lack of uh, teaching the research skills, right? That were like like the mm. critical and the thinking. Most, yeah, and the most, uh, or what do you say, the the table changing moment is that now i am doing a work where i am engaged in research activities and uh, the major work is regarding uh, debunking homeopathy debunking ayurveda and all other alternative medicine and uh, it's all about uh, research clinical research and uh, documenting the liver damage and other things and looking into the medical preparations this uh, uh, alternative medicine preparations which they call as medicine which we call as uh, Uh, what do you say con- concoctions or poisonous substances and we have published more than i have published uh, from our team more than uh, 10 11 papers so it's all uh, available on google scholar you can just have a look at it to see I how this yeah i want to take a moment to appreciate something <laughs> not every person not every person when they are faced with criticism on something they spent years on would do that would do that and change their course like would do and investigate and be like this kind of person to say okay you know what those years i w- i was wrong and i'm going to do something new this takes courage like why why ch- changing my, your mind like that <laughs> it takes extreme courage which i think people like should celebrate i think part of trying to fight those 
Islam and like and things like that is first of all like tr trying to tell those stories and celebrate them in our cultures like look at that person who did something wrong for 10 years and then he discovered something and uh, acknowledged it and recalculated his path those people are like celebrate them as heroes like as something like those are stories that we should tell our kids you know it's okay like people do that something happened like you know the information that was presented You're was wrong and then sad. it's like it's true because <laughs> this is what happens it's like a lot of people we are so afraid like we grow up <laughs> We grow up thinking that we've done a mistake. Like if we, we were wrong, mm. then we are not worth, like it, it takes away from our value as humans. But like, I really, really believe that teaching stories like that, even like something that is not necessarily, it doesn't seem as like, it, it doesn't have the life, the scary effects, let's say that communism or Islam might have. Mm. But having that story and arsenal of stories of like bravery and courage, and that's something that a person that some do something like that, this is bravery. That's cur that's courage. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that, and I a big thanks for that. But apart from that, what I say is, uh, people always ask me, okay, you were a homeopath, now you are an ex-homeopath. You were a Muslim, now you are an ex-Muslim. Now you are an atheist, now you will be an ex-atheist. This is what they say. <laughs> so they don't know how this happens. They don't know how this process works. That's the reason why they say this. They just, uh, they just extrapolate things. That's not how it works. Uh, it's all about the conviction or, and the uh, whole uh, about uh, how you arrived at this decision. And it, it takes time. It takes uh, effort. And it takes um, uh, a lot of things like you need to read, you need to find things, you need to talk to people and many other things. So uh, even when, when it came to Islam, so even... Uh, why I have to, I had to leave Islam is also because of homeopathy. Because after learning all these things, I was engaging with homeopaths within my circle, my colleagues and my seniors and other people around. And we used to have debates on WhatsApp groups and other, other places. So even during all those days, I was a Muslim. That's the most important aspect. So I used to debate with them. And uh, maybe in the middle of this debate, they, it, it will be the Ramadan time, so I will have to uh, leave for, take a break for this uh, breakfast, the, the iftar time. So I'll just tell them, okay, please ho hang on for a moment. I'll just come back after breaking my fast. And I have an, uh, a prayer to do. So because I'm a Muslim, so I have to do all these things. So I'll come uh, back in, in half an hour or one hour. So I used to tell them. So they used to ask me, what kind of uh, free thinker or a science promoter are you? You are criticizing Islam, uh, sorry, criticizing homeopathy, and you are practicing Islam. So what is this? How can it go hand in hand? So they were actually giving me a, a hint towards applying the same principles, that is, looking for evidence. You need to check what the, what the claims are. You need to validate these claims. So they were asking me to do that, even for Islam for my religion which i was thinking until my uh, that age uh, from my childhood which i was believing as true religion the only religion something that is divine and all so i was uh, forced to apply all these principles and that was the game over moment for that islam in me <laughs> because i started applying then i came to know the moon splitting is not possible you can't split a moon then the earth is not flat it is a it is a, uh, a sphere so a lot of things like that. Uh, the sun is not setting in the muddy water. You can't fly to the seven skies. There is no seven sky. There is no seven earth. So that was uh, another epiphany for me. <laughs> like, oh my God, this is what Islam is. <laughs> was this uh, all things that I was carrying with me for all these years? What is this? So I just started keeping myself away from Islam. But even then I was not criticizing Islam. Then, apart from these scriptural issues, the scientific uh, 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 inaccuracy and all other things, apart from that, the biggest issue in Islam is the conflicts with human rights. That's the biggest area. So I started um, uh, ex getting exposed to these kind of things, the, uh, the human rights conflicts and Islam. So that's one area where I was uh, totally attracted towards, like more into that. 
what is happening in uh, uh, Afghanistan and other places and the terrorism and uh, and two words that I was uh, uh, getting introduced was uh, misogyny. I was I, I didn't ever knew such a word, misogyny. What is misogyny? I I, I never knew that. So. I came to know about misogyny while uh, I was listening to some discussion in a uh, in a group where Islam and misogyny that was the title and all and that's one point where I was uh, sh- uh, I was really literally shocked to listen to that because oh so Islam is not equal for men and women men and women so that's not uh, what I was believing. I, I want I want to stress yeah. that I want to say that like a lot yeah. of people are saying how come Uh, Muslims do that and that like especially in a country like Israel where we have a, a large percentage of Muslim population and you would mm-hmm. see people uh, saying things like getting mad about what Hamas does and saying that this is not Islamic or they would say all kind of things and you have to understand that just because somebody is Muslim they it doesn't mean they know what Islam is mm, yeah that's the main thing and th- this was the Uh, the the uh, ditto statement that I used to make like this is not Islam my Islam is not like this this is the statement that you, I used to make and I am still uh, seeing that statement made by my fellow Muslims so I can see that it's still mm-hmm. there it will be there until this end of the world that's what I always say because no Muslim uh, know what Islam is that's the main problem only a Muslims know what exactly Islam is. Majority of Islam uh, Muslims, they are ignorant of Islam. They they doesn't know about Islam. Only what they know Islam. I have made a chart, an infographic, like and it is called as uh, the uh, anatomy of an Islamic state. That's how I termed it. You can see a uh, five stages of Islam that can uh, that a person can go from uh, stage one to stage five. where the stage one is a, a place where the Muslim will be born into a Muslim family. He or she knew a little few things like eating halal, halal uh, saying salam, uh, doing their namaz and all other things. That's the stage one, the level one. If you tell them about jihad, they will kick you out. What jihad? I don't know jihad. But you can pass on to a stage five where that Muslim, the stage 5 islamic muslim will talk about jihad will talk about abolishing democracy that's stage 5 they will speak about establishing islamic state so from stage 1 to stage 5 you have a transition so i i was going through a stage 3 uh, and a middle of 4 where i was mostly being a uh, indian with no exposure to arabic i was more into arabic language because for islam arabic is something uh, a language something divine uh, some a chosen language for islam this this is the kind of idea that we were fed into so i was going through that stage just imagine if it was delayed for maybe this this uh, transition was delayed for maybe one or two years i would be in afghanistan fighting for <laughs> fighting against you <laughs> Why does this transition happen? Why do you go from one to two to because, to, yeah. two to three? Because uh, I told you that uh, I was more attracted towards the conflicts between human rights and Islam. So when these human rights issues happened in my personal life, and when I realized that the reason behind this human right, uh, rights conflicts was Islam, I was forced to look back. Yeah, but I and, mean, why would somebody who grew up with stage mm, one would mm. ever go more, become more Islamic? That is because uh, that's how Islam works, like the Salafi da'wah influence. That's the main, uh, the cancer that we talk about, Salafi da'wah influence, we call it. That is the Salafism or the Wahhabism, the Puritanism, we call it. So uh, there is a movement, movement you, you might be aware of that, that is the Diobandi movement here, Dioband, we call it. So and uh, we have some other uh, uh, factions along with that just like uh, what th- this uh, Taliban is made up of. So what they are preaching uh, even in Tablighi Jamaat you can see that that is there are two kind of dawah activities. One is 
transforming a stage one Muslim, that stage one Muslim, to a real Muslim. That's one uh, one outcome of this Dawa activities. The second act, uh, outcome is converting a non-Muslim to a Muslim. So uh, when you speak about Dawa influence, Salafi Dawa influence, these two things are happening. So when we are usually when you we know criticize, what's amazing to me when yeah. I think there is a reason the first thing they teach is the loyalty. <laughs> okay. Because this is how you get stage one Muslims that know nothing mm. about Islam defending Islam. Yeah. That's the they first will. thing they learn. And then yeah. they would say things like this is not Islam, this is this, this is that. And by doing that, they're actually allowing everything that happens on stage five to five, happen. Yeah, yeah. And then the the I personally believe like moving from stage one to stage two to stage three is also very much very depends different. on your your personality. And so exposure. they find those these people that are vulnerable mm. towards that kind of uh, development mm. and take advantage of that. And those who are not would mm. never get to hear even those mm. parts. Mm -hmm. Right, like they wouldn't even get exposed to it. If they would, you don't pass the test from moving from one to two, you're not gonna know what's on stage three. Yeah, but uh, that that exposure from moving from uh, stage one to three, that happens so normal in our in our society. That's the problem because uh, that movement is promoted not just by the Islamists or the Salafi Dawa influence. It's getting promoted by even the media. They give the uh, the exposure to those things like uh, okay uh, when you speak about zakat or when you speak about this brotherhood and other things like that so they always give they always um, what do you say glorify all these things in islam so they keep on glorifying this glorification that is one area which i am opposed to and that's one area why i'm called called us or or name called as a right winger here because what i'm saying here is if you are uh, glorifying Islam and if you are opposing Hinduism that is dangerous if you are glorifying a religion then you should be able to glorify each and every religion not just the goodness in Islam mm. what is happening here is that people anyone anyone in this universe can criticize Hinduism but not Islam that's what is happening here and why do the, you think people fall for that why do you think non-Muslims fall to that trap one is Islamophobia, that that word. And the second thing is within India, the minority, that kind of victim card, that 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 principle. These two things are making or giving them a chance for applying all these things as a free run. That's the biggest issue. So, uh, so nobody dares to question this because if they question it, they become right winger or they become a uh, what do you say, an Islamophobe. Nobody wants to be an Islamophobe. And even in the West, they are called even as a racist. Who who wishes to be called as a racist? No one. So that's the issue. They are using that. They are, uh, and people are getting fooled by these things. We need to realize this. Islamophobia, we have to ignore it. We have to keep on saying all these things. and And with this conviction, I'm saying all this, and, and this is the reason why understanding all this progression from stage one to stage five, the anatomy and all the things, I think the only good thing uh, why uh, after studying homeopathy as a medical uh, subject, this is the only thing which I use now as a uh, something that, uh, that I can apply everywhere, that is to dissect things perfectly. <laughs> So it's easy for me to dissect things and to find the problems and to address each and every one among them. And I think that's so, easy for me. And Mopathy was the first thing that you left. And then you say Islam and when communism? Communism, yeah. So after leaving Islam, you came to a conclusion that, okay, these are the problem. The human rights issues and other things. So when it came to uh, uh, communism, the main issue was the economic superstitions that's what we call so i was against superstitions and the unscientific things by the time i was leaving islam 
So later on coming into uh, uh, after getting some attention towards the politics and other things I started getting more uh, exposed to uh, how this economics is working and why is India is not uh, becoming a developed country as it wanted to be So one of the reasons why India is lagging behind is its over dependence on some of the communist values for decades that was one of the reasons or the major reason and mm-hmm. that reason was socialism and the communist principles where india was not open to the market india was against this entrepreneurship india was against uh, capitalist and being a capitalist means a crime that was how india was seeing all these things so what after uh, some policy changes that happened in after 1990s india could uh, come forward and that's how we are now racing forward we are now progressing in leaps and bounds so we expect india to be a developed country maybe in next 10 or 30 years that's what we are expecting so for that one of the biggest uh, change that uh, changes that happened was uh, this uh, we we kept ourselves away from socialism and uh, communism so these What? are the two economic policies that was holding india backwards holding india into poverty and all other problems where people were dying what do you think is harder to stop being a, to stop to stop being a muslim or to stop believing in ideas like socialism and communism the biggest problem that i faced was after uh, leaving homeopathy because i had to face a little bit of hunger <laughs> i was oh, jobless well. that's okay. the, i mean that's personal i'm asking the other yeah. two because i like this is yeah, more global so, yeah so that was the most um, problematic one for me as a person like i was jobless and uh, it's not easy to get into a job uh, with a uh, with something that is not useful anywhere else so that was affecting me so personally so that that was one reason and apart um, from that i guess right now what we're seeing with islam on the west that there is a high reward for anyone yeah. who uh participates and glorifies it there is a minute high reward with like financial yeah. reward too right true true yeah so i guess so yeah and i and mean you say it about empathy uh, but i'm saying that it's just in a general things that yeah. are important if you want to get someone out of something hmm. okay well, well, coming to your earlier question that is uh then what i faced the most challenging as a most challenging is leaving islam because loss of personal things like family issues and other things so that's one reason uh, one one aspect so the biggest problem that i faced was in that order homeopathy and islam i have rectified the problems uh, with the uh, this becoming an ex homeopath that is now fixed now i'm trying to fix the second aspect and uh, by becoming an ex communist i don't think there's a big issue only thing is i i only gained much things and the only problem is that you can be called as a right winger or a, an anti human mm. and some name calls because they think themselves that they are the most uh, human people the most equal and all so <laughs> that's one thing right interesting so the question of living these ideologies like the a, a big part of it is like what's the price right what's the price you pay for stopping yeah. be, believing in something hmm. so in amapathy it's a personal price and then with islam it's a social price and yeah. communism you're saying okay somebody is going to it's economic price but is it the hardest but if i think is like i think with islam if you start studying islam this, is the most hardest even, yeah but you get the most like social yeah. and social issues human rights issues social and issues taking and things longer. like that but isn't it easier to see that how islam is wrong more than it is easy for com- to see why communism is wrong like i'm just i'm really really curious like what mm. because to me uh communism is not like we have those beautiful examples that like they're in our faces right with mm. uh, what happened in cambodia what happened in yeah. uh, in the ussr Venezuela. what happened in uh, yeah. venezuela what happened in north korea <laughs> so you have that like in your face kind of situation right yeah um but i think 
the logical steps are maybe like I think I don't know why I feel like Islam is even is easier to see than communism. Like what's wrong with it? Um, the most easier to identify the, as a problem is communism and other things, but to deal with it, that I don't think. Uh, communism is easy to uh, deal with because you know it dies on its own you just give some time communism will die because <laughs> for communism to work you should have people alive <laughs> communism will kill people so with poverty so it's not easy to survive communism uh, means communism will uh, can die off on its own but for islam it is very difficult to uh, uh, combat to uh, like to to uh, control it because that's what i am i'm seeing because they are getting a lot of support from other areas where even opposing that even the the atrocities committed by islamists it is even gaining attraction it is even gaining supporters so that's the biggest problem you uh, you i don't know whether you are aware of that you you can you have a very good pretty good uh, hamas fan base in kerala the place where i'm living okay hamas the october 7th attack that was that terrorist attack that was seen as a resistance they still call it as a as a terrorist uh, how many of these a, people that see, support hamas do you think would actually do something like that themselves if you take the whole muslim population in our area no those who support hamas yeah most of them support hamas yeah but would they do it would they do what hamas did ah uh, that's a question that we used to, ask them they, they will say no <laughs> hamas we support hamas but what hamas did is not right that's what they say they have the right to do it that's what they say so if they have the right to do it what's stopping them from doing it themselves that's a kind of uh, a, a, a conflict that is going on in them and uh, that's what exactly what we are trying to uh, cash in on because that kind of uh, confusion that should be growing stronger in them then only they will come to know what exactly is the problem because this is the same confusion that was occurring in me when i was seeing the conflicts uh, or the problems done by isis and i was of the opinion that isis was right but what isis was doing is not right okay isis is for establishing caliphate we are going to get a cali- khalifa so islamic rule is becoming a reality so i was re- rejoicing that being in a being a believer but later on i started seeing the atrocities committed by them the uh, the bomb blasts and the other terrorist attacks and other things so later on i was thinking okay if they are right why they are doing all this so there is always a confusion and then came what exactly isis is doing is the real islam this is the conclusion so now the next point was whether i should follow that real islam or not if that is the real islam why i am not an isis if what hamas is right why i am not a hamas this is the question yeah so that will lead people outside the religion outside this hate outside this whole issue they will get to know the reality that's how i we we could come out of it So do you so, do that this is something that you ask people hey if that's what you believe in why definitely. don't you do it yeah definitely and how do and how do people respond to that the same argument maybe uh, they come they come in uh, batches like a batch of muslims will come to our live sessions and our discussion points and they will say that this is not the right, the real islam our islam is not this then they will argue for a period of maybe 2 3 months then but they then support. they do it while they support isis or they support hamas if it's not the real islam why do they support no, hamas then no this is how it goes this is a transition we cannot just uh, switch it off like a switch it's not working like that it takes okay, time so- Okay, okay, so can okay. you like walk, walk me through it, please? Like, uh, we are giving them a, a chance to listen to this first. Okay, so we are getting a point to them. That is, what ISIS is doing is right, what Hamas is doing is right. Then why you are not Hamas, why you are not ISIS? That means Hamas is the real Islam. ISIS is the real Islam. 
and you are the fake muslim mm mm-hmm. okay so this this will hit them hardly because this is what hit me hardly and it takes time it it may take 3 months 5 months 1 year 2 years and after that the the outcome is that you are out of islam it takes time they will start it will be in their engraved in their brains that this question this statement so we are giving them a chance to listen to that so we just keep on asking we just uh, say it as it is mm-hmm. uh, so bluntly there's no mercy in that and if our uh, our politicians and other people they were able to do this we wouldn't have seen such a, a rise of islamic extremism in our country or anywhere in the world but even what about those who say yes i also would do that what about this people they they are getting singled out they are uh, they are seen as the outcast in the community and they are getting corrected by the pressure the democratizing secularizing peace making pressure but that that only works when you have a majority that it and we have that majority in india that's the so that that they that they that the that's the only edge, only like hope that... i have okay that's the only hope i have because the majority of indians are hindus they are not muslims okay that's the only hope i have if it was the opposite i would have left this country to some other un-islamic country okay that's the simple point that that's like something that is it hurts to acknowledge yeah. because what you're saying is that countries like pakistan and afghanistan would any of these muslims will ever uh, try to go uh, and live in uh, pakistan any of these hama supporters forget about going to palestine just imagine whether they would go to pakistan and live for at least a week maybe they can go to afghanistan and live for a week i challenge all these people always like uh, especially the islam no but feminists. i'm talking about this this gives hope for muslims in india this gives hope for muslims in the west but what about muslims in muslim countries like can a muslim country hmm. grow out of it um i think they are growing out of it like some countries like uh, saudi arabia if you look at them we are seeing changes in them and it is easy to bring about such changes in that country provided we have a a, a system outside which acknowledges it and we promote it we should keep on appreciating this because that is the only that doing that, that through the leadership yeah the leadership, leadership that like that changes yeah, the people leadership and the the accountability factor that is more important so uh, people they, they should feel that okay whatever things that they are doing is right no one will uh, say that they are right or wrong within the country fearing persecution or fearing other kind of uh, issues so when the people outside they keep on doing it then it's not easy for the, those people so that is for, only, con- for yeah. countries to get out of this cycle they need outside intervention in a in way the, like outside support outside support in the form of a pressure mm-hmm. a transforming pressure interesting so you you in a way you don't really believe that this cycle can stop itself that's very difficult especially for islam if it was about communism i i, I already told you that it can stop because as the people face the poverty they will mm-hmm. always think about the alternatives but being in islam they won't feel that that kind of thing like even if they feel a pain that pain is something that they think that that is for their life here after that pain is giving them uh, what, what do you say uh, <laughs> this gold points for that can be redeemed at the at the heaven so that's what they think so you can't beat them that's a problem that's that's very i think this is the the very interesting concept you know the very interesting idea that mm. this thing is complicated very complicated it's extremely complicated because when you have a population with this mentality of both loyalty and uh disregard for personal comfort 
But but I always say that India as a nation uh, uh, can become a a model in this uh, aspect, like uh, especially for the world Muslims. Uh, I always say that India will be the place in the future where the Muslims will be living the most peaceful life, just because they are not up- upholding Islamic values. They are transforming to be an Indian, where inclusiveness is up, upheld against all this religious nonsense and that kind of uh, transformation is done within the country by the majority hindus where they are already into multiculturalism where they are already into inclusiveness and they are already accustomed of uh, upholding things above religion hindus are already well versed in it so it's not a big deal for them do you think the fact that uh, India is Hindu makes it easier than, uh, let's say, an atheist country? Uh, if you find a Hindu, it's very difficult for you to say whether he is an atheist or a Hindu, a believer. That's a problem. Because asking a Hindu whether you are an atheist itself is irrelevant. I'm saying that an atheist as in no... I, you know, not necessarily has anything to do with God, right? But the yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, practicing religion, even that can be taken into consideration, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you meet a Hindu person, that question is irrelevant. That's what I'm saying. Because kind of like a Judaism, right? Like Jews. He never. Kind of he ne- yeah. He or she, a Hindu person, will never. Uh, expose the religion, will never exhibit the religion the way other people, especially the Muslims, are doing with their attire and other things. Mm. They do it when there comes a time or a reason to, ex- uh, to, to exhibit that, or maybe during their festivals or other times. So that's the kind of uh, way that we, are, we used to see in my childhood. So, uh, especially the, the place where I'm living, even I'm taking that an, as an example, like uh, there's a problem that India is facing. That is the ghettoization, we call it, ghettoization. That is the religions, people segregating by itself into ghettos and living as uh, separate, separate uh, places, tribes like that. And that is not seen in Kerala. You can see a Hindu person, Christian, uh, an atheist and a Muslim all living in the same neighborhood. You can see it here. But if you go into the north, that's not the case. You will he- see a, a Hindu area, you will see a Muslim area, you will see a Christian area, like that. Atheist area is not there, but <laughs> you will see this Muslim and Hindu areas mostly. Christians will be living mostly with Hindus. That's one another aspect. So <laughs> this ghettoization is seen. Let's, but, let's guess why. Yeah, so when you come to Kerala, that is not seen. That was the scene here, maybe uh, 10 or 15 or 20 years back. But now what we are seeing is this ghettoization happening even in our state. So what is the reason? So it's all about uh, finding your own tribe, becoming your own brotherhood, creating your own brotherhood. So what is this, your own brotherhood? What kind of brotherhood is that? Brotherhood means it should be beyond boundaries, beyond your identity. That's not what we are seeing here. It's all about your religion, your identity, and your boundaries. So uh, that's what is happening here. So that's a threat to the coexistence. So this principle of coexistence is getting eroded. And that is the biggest threat that we are seeing. And the the number one um, culprit for this erosion to happen is the Islamists. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to go through a little bit, like a couple of uh, com- uh, sure. uh, short comments and then. Sure, First sure. of all, uh, I'm not going to pretend I can read the Greek or I think it's even not just Greek. That is lover girl. English. I, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something is weird here. It's like I cannot. It's something is mixed. Too mixed for me. This is yeah, like yeah I, from I'm, Russian. I'm used to such comments, so I can read it mostly. Oh, <laughs> this is this is how we say I'm a noob in YouTube. Okay. Well, so welcome, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. Yeah, thank you. Support and all these channels. You. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, listen uh, go to. Go follow Ari. Well, I mean, you, sp- you don't speak English in most of your videos, but 
<laughs> yeah, uh, okay. So the, the issue is that um, I'm mostly uh, facing the people from uh, my state. And you know, there's no point in uh, speaking to them in other languages because you find It's the most true. number of recruits to ISIS from my place who are speaking in Malayalam. So <laughs> there's no point okay. in speaking to them. They, what, what you're doing is what we say, like it's a holy work. It's about that Kurdish, Hollywood. Yeah, the chosen uh, one. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because what you're doing, sitting in India, you're serving mm -hmm. the whole world because ISIS mm -hmm. is hurting everybody everywhere. Okay. So by stopping that, you're helping everyone, all of us, everywhere, wh wherever yeah. we are. Let's see amazing. how long we can do all this. <laughs> um, let's, let's unless, this unless some lone wolf comes and attacks me <laughs> i i hope i i, I pray that you yeah. stay safe and yeah right now the most safest place for me is in india that's why i'm still here maybe in the future we can think of <laughs> moving outside if something happens uh, Ni Ni nicola stalin thank you welcome anyway but go like his the support his channel anyway just find the one yeah, english yeah. video or something you can just yeah it. Yeah, there's because he deserves that. Like, uh, Arif is fighting for all of us. I want to make that clear. He's, he's a soldier that is fighting for all of us. There's then, a playlist uh, for English videos. I can, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I can just. Uh, my name itself is the name of the channel, Arif Hussein Terwat. So you can find it if you are interested. Yeah. Ayatollah Khamenei was a Your uncle flag. again. No, no, it's not my uncle. <laughs> my uncle. Okay. He was a mate. Talking about Another, my uncle. Okay, okay. People uh, be saying Islam don't feel like it is, but it, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sigmund Freud. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I said that, but sure. <laughs> I believe the internet 100% uh, truth. Uh, super sticker. Thank you so much, Harris, for your support. And uh, Chandra Badam. Or Kendra is asking what challenges you face as ex-Muslim. Is a changing name a good option? Is it possible to get minority status added and added protection to ex-Muslims in India? Yeah, one of the main challenges that I am facing as an ex-Muslim here is the, you know, uh, the name of a Muslim is a problem, to be honest, because when you travel, when you uh, when you are uh, <laughs> racism, you know. Islamophobia yeah, yeah. <laughs> am I getting right right? yeah that is it that is Islamophobia, Muslimophobia so, but I, I don't blame those people because uh, they have the enough reasons to, to fear a, a man or a person with an Islamic name or an Arabic name they have the reasons for that so whom should you blame for that It, sh it should be the blame should be on the the Muslims who are doing all these uh, problems and which have which has which has been made into a routine and um, whenever there is a, a bomb blast happening somewhere the first thing that comes to your mind is okay that could be an ISIS person even That's because that, everybody is in Islamophobic yeah so we call it racist. as a heuristic it's it's a it's a mental a psychological trait we have that our brain is made to function like that that is we call it heuristics that's the mental shortcuts that we make so we cannot blame that shortcuts being for that being made so the only thing is whenever you uh, hear something like that yesterday we were hearing a news from australia where a person was uh, committing some crime uh, a lone wolf attack so i was just watching that video and i, I was listening to that news and i i was Uh, telling to one of my friends here that that's not ISIS, that's not a person an Islamist, because only one reason I found that, he was wearing a, a shorts, he was not wearing a pants mm. okay. that's one reason <laughs> wow, that's, that's so, good to know yeah, because you know if a, an ISIS maybe next time after listening to me from uh, <laughs> ISIS video, be like maybe, oh, we found the best way to <laughs> penetrate the society you just see, wear shirts Yeah, see, uh, here in India, we were uh, uh, listening to some other news where a, a bomb blast happened in one of the um, restaurants here. And that those persons, they were traveling with Hindu names. They were giving fake ID proofs with Hindu names. They were wearing some, uh, these kind of, uh, what do you say, the threads and other things those Hindu mm. people used to wear. So they were mimicking themselves as uh, Hindus. So that's how they do it. 
so <laughs> i was just kidding for yesterday's things but uh, but we came to know that he was not something related to this uh, isis and all until now that's news maybe in the future if it changes pardon me <laughs> but now it is like that but the thing is whenever there occurs an, an event like that there is a mental shortcuts that is working and we are uh, giving uh, or we are getting a, a an automatic response within ourselves okay that could be an islamic terrorist so we we cannot blame our, uh, for uh, anyone for that because that shortcut was made possible by the muslims by the islamists who are doing this and the, by the muslims who are not opposing it so that's the main issue so in that aspect i am uh, definitely i'm thinking about a name change but i'll be changing only in my documents i'll be using my this name on my social profiles and other uh, other places and i cannot ask my friends to call by my new name i'm not going to do that but with the documents i'll be changing my names that's for sure that's what i'm planning to do and uh, this minority status and added protection and other things i think currently the the government here they are not that much supportive of ex muslim activism here there are mm-hmm. uh, some of the ex muslim channels which got banned here for their some of their videos and other things and we have many other international uh, ex muslim channels and uh, channels criticizing islam getting banned here so that's also happening here so uh, we are not currently that much supported by the current government maybe in the future that will come we are trying to represent ourselves as atheists and ex muslims and the uh, problems within so maybe after that we may get a position or we may get a, a consideration like that so that's it yeah thank you for asking that chandra badam yeah <laughs> thank you so much and thank you for being here yeah yeah it's looking a, forward for you. more such discussions thank you i love it thank you so much it yeah. was really insightful because you the way you break it down the way you explain it <laughs> you, i like uh, i like action items you know okay <laughs> into movies too much maybe that's the reason Uh, script writing wow. <laughs> no <laughs> okay i mean like you can try that <laughs> i meant uh, action items like you know like this is something you need to teach so you will okay. be like mm-hmm. okay have a deal, have like tools to deal with all kinds of ideas that pop up mm-hmm. you know you never know yeah. what would come yeah i uh, when you say this i just wanted to add that is uh, even i uh you were asking me why people are uh, transitioning from stage 1 muslim uh, islam to stage 5 one reason is the the quest for perfectionism that's one reason mm-hmm. so there are people who are not bothered about perfectionism they will just live their life they are le- least bothered about all these things but those people who uh, want some kind of precision some kind of perfectionism in their uh, daily activities activities and whatever whatever things that they are believing whatever things that they are doing and all and who are more focused on action than words then comes this aspect that is they will keep on looking for or they will just keep on learning and if you mm-hmm. start learning you will transition from stage 1 to stage 5 That's amazing. So, That's an yeah. amazing way to look at so, it. Thank you so, so much. This really is really interesting. <laughs> so if you uh encounter a person who is a perfectionist, just one uh, those people like okay, there is a danger which is uh inherent to that. So we have to be careful about this uh, being a perfectionist. So that's one reason. Okay. That's, that's... <laughs> Now listen, this is super interesting. Mm-hmm. I I think this Uh, islam have hatred of jews baked into yeah i if i was a muslim uh, or if rebecca was talking to me or giving me a, an invitation to talk like this maybe 5 uh, years back or maybe 7 years back i wouldn't accept this invitation and mm. at this point of time i would like to mention one of my friends um she is uh, from israel and uh, i i'm not mentioning her name but uh, we were in uh, communication we were uh, in we were good friends uh, maybe in 2011 12 that period and uh, she was into homeopathy and other things so we were working on the same um, subjects and we were having some communication over there but she was a jew from israel and i was a muslim from india 
and at that time i, I remember there occurred a issue between israel and uh, gaza that time some bombing and other issues like the same thing that we are seeing now and i started posting my islamic jew hatred filled things on my facebook and she unfriended me she <laughs> blocked me <laughs> and i blocked her and all this happened Mm-hmm. and after becoming an ex muslim and after learning all these things and i even i i openly acknowledge that islam is having this jew hatred and this jew hatred is the simple or the the single reason why this problem is not getting resolved and uh, when i after realizing all this i again unblocked her i looked for her i sent her a uh, friend request and we are now communicating with each other and we are in touch with each other yeah so if she is listening a hi to her <laughs> okay that's amazing so this is the kind of uh, hatred that we were carrying like even without seeing a jew uh, we i was or every muslim around the world even if you find a muslim on the mars he will be hating a jew that's how islam teaches a muslim to hate a jew so that's Quite that's cute, in their blood yeah that's in their blood <laughs> there's a hadith i i think you might know that the world will never come to an end the doomsday won't happen until the last jew is killed that's how islam teaches i don't understand why they're so excited <laughs> about sending the world why because, like it's, like because, it's better not to end it you know yeah because <laughs> the prophet muhammad was so uh, jealous of the jews Be, uh, in front of the the jew people who kept questioning prophet muhammad they never believed whatever this uh, <laughs> bullshitry that he was uh, telling those people like the splitting moon and other things and all uh, they were never believing that and they kept questioning and even there's a story of Saf, uh, uh, a, a jewish lady who uh, tested prophet for his prophet prophethood and that's by giving her uh, giving him a, a piece of meat poisoned <laughs> that's how he she tested and I you know mean, i don't think she tested i think she found no, an she excuse tested. to poisoning she, him <laughs> she tested she and there's a hadith so okay. she was asked why you did this i wanted to i mean that's him. the excuse she gave i think yeah. she tried to poison him No she gave the excuse like this I wanted to test him whether he is a true prophet or not because if he is a true prophet he will get a message a wireless communication like Muhammad don't eat over over <laughs> it is poisoned <laughs> don't eat that so that was not happening and prophet ate that and he was poisoned and later on that went on to even uh, he was even there are some other hadith where he was mentioning about the pain that he was facing after uh, getting poisoned and all Uh, cutting a fiota that's the nature of the pain that he was mentioning over and over yeah <laughs> yeah that i think yeah that no and nobody followed her example after that come on <laughs> no we don't we don't promote violence okay that was no, just I mean, an experiment no i mean not poisoning i mean like not in, not believing muhammad because he didn't he ate it yeah <laughs> but it's not 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 a good uh, experiment that's the problem there's oh, a okay. ethical issue <laughs> oh okay yeah ah, i see it. <laughs> thank you for explaining this to me i was okay. i was not aware of that part to me it seemed like completely an okay yeah. experiment to do. There, there's a right. there's a story like that <laughs> all right it is a it, jacks thank you so much for your support it is great to hear Thanks, from Jax. different cultures yeah. belief systems makes it easier to understand different perspective thank you arif and i want to say i want to join that thank you and say thank you for me too yeah thanks Jax. great to see thank you, you collaborate with different people thank you yeah. well thank you so much for your your, your comments and your likes and reactions to these videos will um, help it reach more people so whoever yes. uh, <laughs> they are watching this video please give a like and uh, Please like like here and go follow Arif and like and find his uh, English <laughs> playlist and Yeah, you can. Support but, him in any way you can. Yeah, but new channels need more push. So that's why I'm saying so oh, give you. a reaction so that will uh, yeah, that will let know the Google that it, it it is getting some kind of attention so they will automatically push the channel. They will be displayed to more people so that will get more attention. So that's it. 
so just react to a video by even a like or some uh, even a comment that would do okay well, somebody is asking a very important question uh, they do slip though uh, the uh, answer is barely <laughs> thank you for asking that is apostate prophet in the profile <laughs> picture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay um, okay thank you so much okay uh, good so evening, it was a nice Bangana. time yeah Thanks for listening Hiya. to all this <laughs> and all the viewers here. Thank you so much. Hope to Thank see you, you again. Bye. Bye-bye.